We're so excited about what the Lord has prepared for us today, and I want to share a message with you that comes to us from Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, as you're looking there in your Bible, I'll just remind you, we are going to have communion uh, after the service today. I know sometimes people like to, to slip out, uh, and if you have to, we understand that, but I'd ask if you can to stick around. Uh, we want you to be part of this communion uh, here after a while. So, Matthew chapter 1, beginning there in verse 18. It's a familiar passage of Scripture. And it's one of my favorite passages in all the Bible. Ever since I was a kid, Christmas amazed me. And the thing that amazed me was to wrap my head around this idea of God coming to dwell among us. And I hope today to display that wonderment with you. It says this in Matthew chapter 1, beginning in verse 18. It says, This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet he did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Can somebody say amen right there? Amen. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. He gave him the name Jesus. I want to speak to you for a, a few moments on this idea, the surprise of Christmas. Let's pray together. God, as we come today, we look at a familiar story, a passage we have read so many times. Every year, this time of year, we read this story. Yeah, God, I pray that your Holy Spirit today would breathe on this passage of Scripture. Make it come alive to us. And may the great surprise of Christmas, may the great wonder of what you've done in Christ Jesus, may it become real to us again this morning. Breathe on us, O God, and may your Word come alive within us. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. And amen. Years ago... When I was younger, I remember uh, Christmas when I saw my dad wrapping presents for my mother. And I noticed one of the presents that he wrapped was a shoebox. It had big black boots on the side of it. And he wrapped up that box. And me, being an eager little four-year-old that I was, I went running straight to my mother. And I told her, there's a pair of boots waiting on you under the Christmas tree. She was disappointed to have the surprise ruined, but really she was quite excited. My mother had always wanted a pair of boots. She hadn't really advertised that, but she wanted it, and she was so excited that in just a few short days she would have the pair of boots she always wanted. Christmas Day came. She had her surprise face ready. She wasn't going to wrap me out. That's how you know Mama loves you, right there. And yet when she ripped off the paper and she flew open that boot box, she was genuinely surprised to find the robe that she wanted and not the boots that she needed in that box. <laughs> Christmas is full of surprises. We don't know what's waiting on us. Even if we've been told what's waiting on us, it might not be what we think. And it's fitting that this time of year is full of surprises, for from the very beginning, Christmas was filled with surprises. In fact, in the passage of Scripture we just read, Joseph experiences three Christmas surprises that I want to share with you this morning. Things he never would have expected God to do, things he never would have expected God to bring about, and yet these surprises fall in his lap at Christmas. The first surprise comes to us in verses 18 and 19. He was surprised by this virgin named Mary. 
You see, he was engaged to marry this woman. And in the ancient world, engagement was a very serious thing. Engagement would often last as long as a year, and you were essentially considered married, even though you had not gone through the ceremony yet. In fact, you had to get a certificate of divorce just to call off the wedding. It was that serious of an ordeal. The only difference between a married person and an engaged person in the ancient world is that an engaged couple could not live together. They could not be intimate in any way. That had to be reserved until the marriage was fully complete. So in the process of engagement, you could imagine how surprised Joseph was when he found out Mary was having a child. He knew it could not be his, and so that would imply that she had been with someone else in those days, in engagement, if that were to happen, it was considered adultery. Mary, in the ancient world, could have been drug out into the street and stoned because of this news. Yet Joseph, not wanting to embarrass her, not wanting to shame her, not wanting to have her stoned, made the decision to divorce her privately, not to make a big deal about it, not to make a big fuss about it, not to go post it on Facebook about it. Hello. Hello. He kept it quiet and was going to divorce her quietly. And yet, if that surprise wasn't enough to find out Mary was going to have a child that was not his, the second surprise in verse 20 was all the more shocking. An angel shows up to Joseph and lets him know that the child Mary is having is none other than the child of God, that the Spirit of the Lord has overshadowed her, and now she was going to bring the Son of God into the world. Oh, friend, Mary had not been unfaithful to Joseph. Mary had been faithful to God. Mary had not done something that was scandalous. Mary was doing something that was marvelous. Mary had not done a terrible thing. Oh, no, Mary had done a wonderful thing that she would bring the child of God into the world. Amen. This child would be born, and it came from God, not from Joseph, but from God. How does all that work out? Well, it's amazing to think about that the eternal Son of God left the splendor of heaven to come and dwell among us, to come and be in Mary's womb. The Son of God left the splendors of heaven to come dwell in this fallen world. The Son of God left the golden streets of heaven to walk the dirty streets of Nazareth. The Son of God left His righteous robes of glory to be wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger. The Son of God left behind a throne in heaven to lie there in a manger. The Son of God left a place where the angels would cry, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty to come to a world where this world would cry, Crucify Him some 33 years later. The Son of God left all the splendor of heaven to come and dwell with us. Amen. Amen. What does that mean for Jesus? Later on, it tells us that he will be Emmanuel, which means he will be God with us. So he is God, meaning he's divine, and yet he's with us, meaning he is human. On his mother's side, he is fully human, yet on his father's side, he is fully divine at the very same time. Amen. What does that mean, preacher? On his mother's side, he was born in a manger. Yet in his, on his father's side, he came from an eternal kingdom in heaven. On his mother's side, he was the son of Mary. Yet on his father's side, he was the son of the living God. 
on his mother's side, he aged just like we do. Yet on his father's side, he was the everlasting God. On his mother's side, we find that he changed with time. Yet on his father's side, he was the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. On his mother's side, we find that he could get sick just like we do. Yet on his father's side, he could open blinded eyes and cause the lame to run. On his mother's side, he got hungry like we do. Yet on his father's side, he was the bread of heaven. On his mother's side, we find that he got thirsty like we do. Yet on his father's side, he had rivers of living water. On his mother's side, he could sin just like us. Yet on his father's side, he was sinless and without fault. On his mother's side, he could die a gruesome death on the cross. Yet on his father's side, death could not hold him and the grave could not contain him. He was fully human, and yet he was fully God. Emmanuel, God with us. So what does this great surprise mean? It means that Joseph finds that this baby is not just a baby he didn't see coming. This baby happens to be God. And what that means in our everyday life is this, that this baby that was born is human enough to understand our problems, our infirmities, our issues in this world. Yet at the same time, he's God enough to fix the problems of our time. You see, Jesus is human enough that he knows what it is to be lonely this time of year, for Jesus saw his disciples flee from him at the end of his life. And yet he's God enough to say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. See, he's human enough that he understands grief. He stood at the tomb of Lazarus and cried his friend that had died. And yet he's God enough to say, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. He's human enough that he's dealt with storms and tragedies, going through literal storms in his own life. And yet he's God enough that he can say, peace be still and everything cease. He's human enough that he understands the burdens we carry as he himself carried burdens. And yet he's God enough to say, cast all your cares on me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's human enough that he understands what it is not to have enough. And yet he's God enough to say, I'll meet all of your needs according to my riches and glory. He's human enough to know our every problem. Yet he's God enough to be our every solution. He is Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us today. What a surprise that this baby would be the bridge between earth and heaven. What a surprise that this baby would bridge humanity back to God. But there's a third surprise. Even more surprising, even more shocking, even more unexpected than either of the previous two. For Joseph was not only surprised by a virgin, he was not only surprised by an angel, but if you keep reading there in verse 21, he's surprised by a Savior. For the angel tells him, You shall call him Jesus, for he will save the people from their sins. See, in the ancient world, the Jewish people had been looking a long time for someone that would save them from the power of Rome. Someone that would deliver them from these armies that had lauded over them. They were looking for someone to ride in on a white horse and bring victory. They were looking for someone to bring an angelic army from heaven and conquer all their foes. And instead of getting the warrior they wanted, God sent them the Savior that they needed. 
instead of sending them a fighter on a white horse. God sent them a baby that would go and die for the sins of humanity. You see, they opened up the boot box and found the robe. They opened up the thing they thought they really wanted and said, and God said to them, no, I know what you need. In the midst of your sin, in the midst of your failure, you need someone to redeem you. And today at Christmas, we have a Savior that redeems us from our sin. The great surprise of Christmas is a Savior. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Today I'm amazed. In the world in which we live, so many people are looking for so many things. They want political power with the right party to win. They want things to be different across the globe. They want things to be different at work. They want a whole lot of things. But can I tell you, friend, all those things are fine to want. But can I tell you the base need that we all have? We need a Savior to save us from ourselves. And today, God grants to us the one thing we cannot get for ourselves. He gives us a Savior named Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden, it makes sense. Why Jesus was born of a virgin. Because you see, Mary and Joseph, as good a people as I'm sure they were, they could never have a son good enough to save us from ourselves. They could never have a son perfect enough to redeem us. They could never have a son holy enough to purchase us back from the hands of the enemy. But can I tell you today, when God got involved, He came down and overshadowed Mary, and He placed within her a son that was good enough, that was holy enough, that was perfect enough, that He might die for the sins of the world. Friend, we could not save ourselves, but thanks be to God, God stepped in and brought salvation to all who need it. Thanks be to God. Why? Because in coming, in dying eventually for us, the very heaven that He gave up to come here, we get to experience for ourselves. The ancient church said it this way, the Son of God became a Son of Man, that the sons of men might become the sons of God. Amen. What's that mean, preacher? It means that He walked the dirty streets of this world so we could walk the golden streets of heaven. He came to a place with pain and sorrow so we could go to a place where there would be no more tears. He came and suffered in this world where we could go to a place that we would never hurt again. He came and wore swaddling clothes so we could wear robes of righteousness. He came and he heard crucify him, crucify him so we could stand in heaven and hear the angels sing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty. Hear me today, friend. The Son of God became a Son of Man so that the sons and daughters of men might become the sons and daughters of God. That is our hope today. That the Savior we didn't even know we needed came to die for us. So here's the good news. Here's the surprise. God does not leave us to ourselves. God has not abandoned us. But today I invite you to open that present fresh and anew to be a surprise once again at the Savior that came in the manger of the life that He would live of the death that He would die, of the new life that He would experience once for all of us. Today, you can still be surprised by Christmas. Today, that eternal life, that Savior, is still available to you. Would you stand with me this morning?